so we put the Quran. My crown fell off. Beforehand, the priest had told me several times how important this moment is, how sacred. It was uncomfortable. No, how dumb. The crown's a symbol of our faith, and suddenly it was gone. Bulgaria's stunning natural landscape is the perfect backdrop for Antonia Hubancheva and Viktor Senderov's dream wedding. It's here they feel most at home. But their wedding weekend begins at the foot of the Trojan Balkan mountain in the town of Sopot. They exchange vows at the local church in the Bulgarian Orthodox wedding ceremony. Neither the bride nor the groom is very religious. For the biologist and the IT expert, the decision to get married here was a compromise. The church wedding was mainly for the families, not so much for ourselves. Though, to be honest, it triggered some positive emotions, even if my interpretation of things is a bit different than what we heard in church. During the centuries-old ceremony, the bridal couple are crowned. The best man, or kumbaro, exchanges the crowns on the bridal couple's heads three times to symbolize Jesus' crown of thorns. After the crowning, the bridal couple drink wine from a common cup. It's meant to show that from now on, they're to share everything, in good times and in bad. And to sweeten their future life together, there's chocolate. It was worth it. The ceremony takes close to an hour. Now, according to church law, Viktor Senderov and Antonia Hubancheva are man and wife. But the part they've been waiting for, the traditional open-air wedding celebration, is still to come. A few days before the wedding ceremony, Euromax reporter Andreas Korn scrambles up this rocky route to meet the future couple. They're here conducting research, setting up a bat trap in the mountains of Rusensky Lom Nature Park. As a biologist, Antonia studies the behavior of these winged mammals. After nightfalls, reporter Andreas Korn gets to see the bats up close for the first time. Look at this, like a little muffin. I'm surprised. <laughs> I told you they're not that big. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't only come for the bats. I came more for the two of you. <laughs> so I wonder, because you, I heard, are more like a little bit like Indiana Jones, like Indiana <laughs> Tony. And you are more like a, um, like a Steve Jobs, like, like a computer guy. So yeah. how, how did you two find each other. Yeah, well, there, there, there's this intersection of biology and, and, and field biology and computer science and bioinformatics. So we were both at a bioinformatics conference. To be honest, I wasn't interested in Victor in the beginning. Oh my god, that's um, quite tough. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, but he was so insistent. He was really, he was so brave. I invited her on a date. And apparently, um, the way I invited her was very convincing <laughs> to her. I was like um, super excited, so she liked the fact that I'm excited about it. In the cave, the couple also tell Andreas about everyday life in Bulgaria. Here, scientists earn very little, which affected their wedding plans. Without a little help from their friends, they could never have afforded their traditional outdoor celebration. In the Bulgarian capital, Sofia, the couple are looking for an outfit for Victor. Their wedding planner, Nevena Jekova, is here to help. The bridal couple and all the guests, including Andreas, are to wear traditional Bulgarian folk costumes. This for me now? Uh, let's try it. Okay. And why, why, why did you decide now to have a, have a traditional wedding? It's 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 nice, isn't it? I mean... Well, everything started with uh, the fact that uh, Victor's grandfather was a bagpipe uh, player. First, we wanted to have bagpipes at the wedding. <laughs> but then this means like a lot of uh, traditional dancing, and then it's just all oh, keep building up, building up. And then we met uh, Nevena, and we fell in love, and <laughs> yeah, and that's I the end of the story. Let's find yeah. something for you now. It's about you, not about me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The patterns vary according to the region. There's no traditional costume just for weddings. The outfits are worn at all festive occasions and on holidays. 
Anivena, would you say this is now a trend that young people want to marry in a traditional way again? Yeah. 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 Actually, recently, the last few years become very popular to use traditions, maybe not the whole wedding, but to use traditions and to uh, make something traditional in the weddings. And wh why? Why do you think that? Because, uh, I don't, not sure exactly, but so many people be start to okay. look back at I the roots, start to, to search for the magic in life. And Bulgarian traditions are very magical. Uh. Now you look really like a Bulgarian old-fashioned uh, gentleman somehow. <laughs> and to me also your whole attitude seems different now. How, you feel different now? Well, it's also a little bit because of the uh, harness here. Yeah. It kind of makes you stay upright. As a wedding guest, Andreas also has to dress in traditional Bulgarian garb. What do you say? Do you say something like cheese or how do you say it? Marma, The day after the church wedding, the guests head for a meadow on the Trojan Balkan mountain at an elevation of 1800 meters. All of them arrive in traditional dress. Nevena is busy making the final preparations. Then the musicians play the gaida, a kind of bagpipes that's been played across the Balkans for centuries. Victor now has to undergo a shaving ritual. Our reporter is in on the action. It's not even sharp. Now I understand. And why do they do the shaving now? What does it because mean? Because this is the symbol of uh, moving from childhood to adulthood. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. oh. Okay. The clean-shaven Victor can now go and fetch his bride. He takes a flag along with him. It's traditional for bachelors to ask the parents of the prospective bride for her hand in marriage. If they agree, the flag is then hoisted onto the roof of their home as a sign that their daughter is taken. But today's celebrations are more about fun than ritual. So Victor waves his flag proudly even when he has to eat some magical bread. What, what are they doing now? They are, it's a welcoming from the groom's mother yeah. to the newlywed couples. And she's giving them the bread and she's putting some salt because they need to be able to um, swallow easily the hard moments in their life. Oh. And honey, so to have a lot of sweet moments yeah. in their life. Then it's time for the maid of honor to remove Antonia's veil. This symbolizes her transition from innocent maiden to mature young bride. Innocent maiden to mature young bride. We are working to realize our dreams and looking to the future, and for a way to stay together. That'll be tough, as Victor has to go to Sweden for an extended period. And I'm going on a short exchange to Germany. But after that, we want to return to Bulgaria. After all, we're doing all this so we can be here. The grand finale of the traditional wedding ritual is the horo, a Bulgarian folk dance. Oh, it's not easy, huh? Your dance? It is the easiest? Oh my God, I don't want to see the difficult one. The celebration is a dream come true for the bridal couple. I won't let you go. We'll find a way. If Victor and Antonia can incorporate some of the magic from the party into their daily lives, they're certain to have a bright future together.